<laughs> hey guys, it's Lisa and Josie, um, and today I wanted to do just kind of an update on being a mom of two babies a year apart. Um, I know that there's quite a few moms out there now that um, have little ones that maybe aren't as close as Josie and Elam, but are, I know Brandy, um, I think Josie and Noah are like a year and a half apart, um, and who else? Anyways, there's a couple out there. And um, so I just wanted to give an update now that they're a little bit older. Um, I don't think I've talked about it for a while. So how, how are things going? Um, a lot easier. Um, so look forward. <laughs> it does get easier. The best thing I think um, now having them this close is their interaction. Um, Elam's starting to warm up to his sister, but he um, is he's just, gosh, he's just such a boy that um and all of his cousins are boys josie's the first girl in our family since me um so all the rest of them i think we've got between the ages of five and elam um he's got seven or eight boy cousins that all live really close that he plays with on a daily weekly basis so other than that so he's used to kind of being rough so now it's teaching him you know um gentle soft um, so he's starting to get that, but he still will sometimes just bowl her over or, um, he has a little couch and that is his couch. We got him that for him when he turned one and he doesn't like Josie being on it, touching it, um, anything like that. That is the one thing that he is very, hey you go, possessive over is his couch. Um, but his toys, he's fine with her touching them, with her playing with them. <laughs> So silly. Um, so that's probably the only, we no longer have jealousy issues. Um, he does not like it when she cries. So that that's helping, you know, him when he like bowls her over and she starts crying. He'll like get down there and lay down on the floor with her and like look at her like, are we okay? What's the matter? Nope, you're going to get my hair. Um, yeah, there's my necklace. So that's pretty much the only, um, the major thing that we're having now with, um, with them. Other than that, you know, I love, I love how close they are in age. Um, Elam will always have a play date and if it's snowed in and we can't go see his cousins, um, he's got a live in play date with Josie and it's, um, really kind of defined Josie who she is as well with having a bigger brother, um, Sometimes if she's trying to reach a toy that's a little bit too high, um, she'll sit there and just start whining and like almost pointing at it and Elon will grab it and give it to her and he tries to feed her his cereal or his juice cup. Um, so he's very good at sharing and they are, we have done a couple nights of them sleeping in the same room. We put her, um, crib, uh, I'll talk about that real fast. So. Josie is not a good sleeper. I've talked about this before and a lot of it was I would not let her cry it out. I'm not a fan of the cry it out method, but because she likes her binky so much, um, half of the time she would just wake up and cry because her binky fell out of her mouth. So my husband said, you know, we're going to move her to another room because I seriously was not getting sleep. It was affecting my health. It was affecting our relationship. So he said, we're going to put her in Elam's room because unfortunately, um, my mother-in-law lives with us, so she shares. So she has the third room. So we only have the one room for the kids to sleep in, which is changing soon. Thank you, Jesus. Um, and so we put the crib, which was side carted. We put the crib in the nursery. And she did, I think we did like two or three days there, but it was keeping Elam up. Every time she woke up, Elam would wake up, um, and then he'd be crabby the entire next day. And so mommy wasn't going for that. So not only was I waking up for Josie, but I was waking up for Elam. So we took the pack and play and, um, we have a huge walk-in closet and we put the pack and play in the closet. I know that sounds mean, but she likes it dark and quiet. Um, that's the way she sleeps the best. She'll put herself to sleep. You just set her down. Um, but as long as it is dark and quiet. So that was the only other, you know, area that we had that was dark and quiet and she loves it um she's still in there but last night like I said in my other video 
was her first night sleeping all the way through the night. So once she gets to like a consistent maybe two or three days sleeping through the entire night, she will go back in the nursery with Elam. She will not be in the pack and play, but she loves the pack and play. Hi, Booker. Um, so yeah, just having them too, having them close now is not is not being an issue. Um, I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that I am a stay at home mom. I couldn't imagine having two this close and working um, because during the day they demand my entire entire undivided attention. Um, the thing now is I'm able to actually get dressed and do my hair and straighten it and clean the house. Oh, good Lord, clean the house. Because before, I wasn't able to. And I want to let you moms know that if you're a stay-at-home mom and you have two little ones this close, forget it. Um, it Having a clean house, I mean, you don't want a pigsty or anything like that. But picking up um, and having a spotless house 24-7, it's not going to happen. You won't have the time and don't feel bad. Um, that was the biggest thing for me is I felt bad because I was a stay-at-home mom. I felt that that was my part contributing to the family was having dinner ready, having the house clean, having the laundry done, having the laundry put away. But these two, I don't have time to do that. I do now because they both are taking naps together. So I have like two hours where I get to tidy up the house, get dinner in the crock pot. Oh, crock pot meals are my life now. Um, get dinner in the crock pot, put laundry <coughs> away, um, take a shower. Oh, take a shower. <laughs> so just things like that, that you weren't able to do maybe the first six months because their schedules were opposite or whatever. Um, you'll, you'll get to do that, but cleaning the house needs to not be a priority. You are contributing to your family by helping to grow and meet the needs of your children. Um, and that's one thing that my husband actually told me because I, I, one night I was just bawling to him and I was like, I feel like a failure and I'm not holding up my end of the bargain staying at home. And, um, and he said, no, he was like, that doesn't matter to me. It's my kids being healthy and learning and me teaching them and spending time with them and making sure they're not sitting all day in a poopy diaper, um, things like that. So I am here going to start doing a... I am going to do a day in the life so you guys can see my routine, but, um, and it's pretty much for the same, like, how it's always been, um, that's, thanks for hitting me, but it's, it's so easy now, I'm actually able to, um, watch a TV show at night when they both go down to bed, because they, they're on the same schedule, so, um, just having them this close has completely gotten a lot easier. Um, I think the first six months were the hardest, but being pregnant was by far the hardest than even her being here. Um, just because when you're pregnant, you're so exhausted and tired and drained and um, you still have a baby to take care of. Oh, really? You're really? Hi. Um, but other than that, yeah, I love it. I love having them this close. Do we plan on having a third? Yes, we do. Um, do we want them this close again? No. I think I'm going to wait until Josie's two, and then we'll have our third. Hi. Actually, I want to get pregnant when she's two. That way she's almost three. But that'll put me, I'll be what? You're going to be one, and I'll be 30. So that'll put me at, I'll be having a baby at 33. That's not too old. <laughs> My husband thinks so, because he's three years older than me. That'll make him 36. But we'll see. So yeah, I just wanted to give you guys an update. It gets better. Um, I love being a mommy of these two little kids. Oh, the hardest thing as well when they were, well, I mean, it's still, it, it's still little, but it's kind of something you just have to deal with, is going out. Um, I got a double stroller, so the easiest thing is to, I take and put Josie in the car, because she's in a car seat. Um, it's not like she can get out, so I go and take the car seat, hook it in, and then I run inside and grab Elam. Because if I take Elam out there first, or if I take them both out at the same time, it's hard for me to hold their hands, get her situated, get her locked in, um, and Elam has ran into the street, and it scared the living bejesus out of me. So I um, now take her out and then hold Elam's hand, lock the door, and go out in the car. It's not, but the, it's not like... My car is that far away from my house. It's my garage. So, um, so yeah, so that's, that's one of the hard things is going out or going grocery shopping. And so the one thing that I 
suggest having is an ergo or any type of baby sling or carrier um, because if I take her in her car seat and I put her car seat in the basket and Elam's sitting on the top then I have nowhere to like put groceries so she loves her ergo it's easy for me to put on myself um, that's probably one of the, my main must-haves as being a mommy with two little ones. And I get comments all the time, you poor woman, or you have your hands full. Yeah, I have my hands full, but don't think, don't say that in a negative way. Um, my kids will be best of friends, and my daughter has a bigger brother, so when she's in 11th grade, he'll be a senior to look out for her and help her and teach her, and <laughs> yay! And I wouldn't trade that for the world. So just know that it gets better. Hi, and I'm sure it's going to get much better as they grow. All right, say bye-bye. I'm out here. All right, bye, guys.